One of the hardest things to do is break in a catcher's mitt. That's why today I'm going to be showing you how to do just that. This is also a video that a lot of you guys have been requesting for a really, really long time. And I just haven't had that much time to get into it. But this weekend, I have the perfect opportunity to show you guys how I break in a catcher's mitt. Because one of my friends sent me his brand new custom Rawlings mitt for me to break in. Before we get started on this video, I want to take a second to thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers on the channel. When I started this channel two years ago, um, it was out of boredom and just wanting to start up something baseball related. Uh, and then it just became what it is now, which is the channel where I just talk about baseball gloves, um, mostly to help younger people and just people getting into baseball. Uh, to help them like breaking gloves and, and just get the most out of their equipment. So again, I want to thank you guys so much for 2,000 subs. I really appreciate the support. Thanks, guys. So the mitt that I used this season to catch a lot of pens was this Mizuno. Uh, what is it? Let's see. Mizuno Pro Select Catcher's Mitt. It's a 33 and a half. I purchased it from my local Dick Sporting Goods, and it was already like pretty soft. But what really got this glove to this state was from just catching a lot. I used some glove conditioner and then I just caught a bunch of pens. One of the biggest mistakes people make with breaking in any baseball glove, including catcher's mitts, is that they try to squeeze the glove way too hard before it's even ready to close. For example, this mitt is way too stiff. I can't even close this mitt with all my strength. When you try and squeeze a mitt that's too hard, what's going to end up happening is you're going to form bubbles in the palm, especially right here on this part of the mitt, you're going to form a big bubble and it's not going to look good. So my goal with this mitt is to break it in as evenly as possible while also just making it have a really good pocket. To break in this mitt, I'm not gonna use a mallet or any conditioner at all. What I'm actually gonna do is use this eight pound weight. Um, if you have a seven pound weight or a 10 pound weight or five pound weight, that should work fine. But I'm gonna use this eight pound dumbbell to essentially form a pocket and also break in the pads and break in the heel right here in order to get the perfect form. I wouldn't really consider myself a catcher, but one of my biggest pet peeves is whenever I see a catcher's mitt that's broken in like this. This is not what you want. This has absolutely no pocket. And if a ball hits here or there, it's not gonna go into the pocket. The way I like to visualize a catcher's mitt is that it's essentially just one huge box with a pocket in the inside. And it should look something like this when you break it in. Chris Banger actually made a really good video explaining how a catcher's mitt should be broken in. Um, for me, catcher's mitts are really the only glove that can be broken in one way for the best form. Now, if you break in your catcher's mitts differently or if you form them differently, that's your prerogative. I can't tell you what to do. This is just what I learned from watching a lot of pro guys catch you know, on TV and in games, and also just from catching pens and, and just feeling how the ball hits the pocket. When we break in gloves, we typically don't think of using a weight as a mallet, but since catcher's mitts are really stiff and they have a lot of padding in them, using a light weight like the one I'm using in this video will do a better job at softening up the leather. Something else that's really important to note is I use a baseball to maintain the pocket in the glove. What ends up happening a lot of the times whenever people use a mallet or a weight on a glove, it'll make it really flat. But with this mitt, I wanna maintain the form and keep it nice and rounded. That way, even when the mid is broken in, it won't become a pancake too quickly. Not only am I going to pound the heel and the outer padding of the glove, I'm also going to pound the web and get that web really loose because that's where the ball is gonna be hitting the most. Sometimes when people break in catcher's mitts, they break in the heel and they get the mitt to close pretty easily. But since the pocket is still really stiff, what ends up happening is that the ball will not stick and it'll pop out all the time. One last really important thing I wanted to show you guys is actually shaping the mitt. The way I shape the mitt is by taking the weight and pressing it into the palm and essentially just bending the outer padding inwards to get that bowl shape. When it comes to breaking in gloves, shaping is a really crucial part. Shaping will make your glove fit better to you and your play style. And for catcher's mitts, it's gonna ensure that pitches stick into the mitt better.
One last thing you want to do is stretch the mitt out. And this goes with absolutely any glove. Not only do we want to stretch the leather to make it easy to close, we also want to make gloves easy to open. Hours later. Okay, so after about two days of breaking in this glove, I've gotten it to about this. This is not 100% game ready. Uh, I would say it's about like 95%. But just like with any other glove, to break in a catcher's mitt, you need a lot of patience and persistence. Now, there's another way you can break in catcher's mitts, and that's just from playing catch. But that takes a much longer time. And if you don't have a guy that throws at least like 75, 80 miles an hour, it's going to take a really long time for you to break in this mitt. Something else I would do to break in a catcher's mitt is to go to a pitching machine and just, you know, sit in front of it, try and like, you know, have it at a really decent speed. But yeah, like I said before, two days of just using the weight and using a mallet and using a ball inside the mitt to maintain the form, I was able to get it to about this. With baseball gloves and catcher's mitts especially, it's really important to remember that these are made to be beaten and used. So don't be afraid to really manipulate the leather to get that form you want. As you can see, I formed this mitt almost exactly as I formed my Mizuno catcher's mitt. I'm sure that with one or two bullpen sessions, this mitt will be 100% game ready. One last thing I wanted to mention is to be careful of this one thing when we're getting catcher's mitts. A lot of people like to focus a lot of attention on the heel of the catcher's mitt. And while that's good, and that that's how it goes for most gloves you don't want to only break in your catcher's mitt on the heel because what ends up happening is that your catcher's mitt will close like this and you won't form any pocket so make sure to give attention to the heel and also give attention to the back of the mitt just like how i showed in the montage part of the video you want to hit the heel here and also hit the back of the glove along this side and along that side if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Again, I want to thank you guys for 2,000 subs. Just in two years time, like 2,000 subs is a lot. I wasn't expecting to get that amount of subscribers and followers in that short amount of time. So again, thank you guys so much for that. Now that I'm done with school and I'm just going to be playing summer ball, I'm going to have a lot more videos out. So stay tuned for those. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, guys. See you later.